We are blessed with sunshine almost through the year. And that makes solar energy one of the most viable renewable energy sources for India. Welcome everyone to Urban Reality. As solar power tariffs crash to historic new lows, we put the spotlight on solar to find out, is India's solar story really shining? Well, the government seems to think so. And while critics are questioning the business rationale of solar tariffs, dipping below that of both nuclear and coal-based electricity, Piyush Goyal, the minister in charge of renewable energy, bunks the skeptics. Hear him out. About the unsustainable level of the price, I've heard that story for the last three years. Every time we determined a lower price. I heard it when 12 cents became 10, when 10 became 8, 8 became 5. No, I thought it was already quite low and then this last bidding and all of this is transparent bidding. We set a target to add uh, renewable energy, particularly solar and wind in a big way and take uh, solar up from 2,600 megawatt in 2014 to 100,000 megawatt in 2022. Our solar install capacity has grown by 370% in the last three years. And this rapid growth is going to continue in the years to come. The three big questions we're asking this week on Urban Reality, with solar power tariffs falling to new lows of 2 rupees 44 pesa per unit, is this business sustainable? Also, will solar energy be able to replace thermal power anytime soon? And finally, the NDA government recently came out with a statement that there's no power shortage in India anymore. So if we are power surplus, why do we still face power cuts? Joining me for this debate, Vinay Rustagi, Managing Director, Bridge to India. Also, Ivan Saha, CTO and President of Vikram Solar. Sunil Jain, CEO, Hero Future Energies. And Kanika Chavla, Senior Program Lead, Council on Energy, Environment and Water. All of you, a very, very warm welcome. I think... Uh, Mr. Rosagi, first question to you. So much excitement, also skepticism altogether on the rates of solar tariffs falling to 2 rupees 44 per unit versus now, I mean, what NTPC is charging, 3 rupees 20 per unit for thermal power. So what really happened at Badla? Did you think that the bidding was very aggressive? Yeah, so Manisha, you know, like uh, most of these things, there are multiple factors which explain why the tariffs have come down so fast. First of all, I mean, if you look at historically, uh, about one, one and a half years ago, the tariffs for these projects used to be around 4.5 to 5 rupees. So they have indeed come down by about 45% in the last one and a half years. Uh, having said that, equipment costs have come down by about 30 to 40% in the same period. So that explains bulk of the reduction in the tariffs. Uh, the government has also been giving lots of incentives and making it easier for the private sector to set up these projects. So for example, they are providing plug and play based solar parks so that the developers don't have to acquire any land and transmission on their own. But the third factor, which, is a, which, I, which I guess goes to the heart of your question is, uh, is that uh, there is an increasing amount of competition in the sector because the government has yes. been very successful uh, in, in hyping up or, or building up the renewable sector a lot of private sector players have come in for various reasons, including uh, not very fast growth uh, in demand. Uh, the supply of new projects or the issuance of new tenders has slowed down, which means that the sector is now getting very, very competitive. And that, to our mind, has been at the, the, one of the main reasons why the tariffs have come down to 245 in the last auction. You know, uh, what was surprising was, and I'm going to ask Sunil Jain here, because I think Hero Future has just lost by one pesa, this bid. So, so here you have, uh, two days before the bid of ACME went through, uh, you had Felon Energy and Avada Power actually bidding at 2.62. So what really prompted uh, you, sir, to actually go down to the rate of 246? Mr. Sunil Jain? So, you know, I'll tell you something. Mm, nothing much changed between two days, you know, between the two Badla bids. I believe the 20 paisa gap or 18 paisa gap has got more to do with the desperation to get the bid rather than any new mm. enlightenment in terms of the costing of the project or generation of the project. Only thing was that you could have got uh, some 5 to 10 paisa benefit of the economies of scale because you were doing a 500 or a 300 megawatt project against 100 or 150 you would have got in the previous 250 megawatt bid. 
But besides that, I don't see any difference. Probably all of us are desperate to uh, show growth in the business. And there are too few projects and too much money chasing them. Uh, probably I would all sum right. it so up that way. That but okay, okay. I mean, that's, view. that's actually a very, very honest answer. I'll come back to you. Let me get Kanika Chavla's viewpoint here. Here you have a company which has actually bid for it, saying that, look, they're just such few tenders, too many companies <coughs> chasing a very small pie. And there's this Deutsche Bank report, which is actually very, very eye-opening. It says that forget about giving any equity returns. You could actually have a situation at that rate that you may not be able to service debt. Kanika, is that a possibility? So I think that um, finance is a very important part of the story. 70% um, of every unit's price is the cost of finance, both of debt and equity. So, so in that sense, I think Deutsche Bank's report raises an important point. But I think it's also important to listen to the market. Mm -hmm. Between February when the Reva Solar Park bid came out and, and now with the Badla Parks. 40% down, the rates. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, there's obviously something is right, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the same companies wouldn't keep bidding again and again. And, and Mr. Jen is absolutely right. There is a lot of capital available, hmm. but capital is also not going into unbankable projects. So these projects do How make... How are we so sure about that? Because, uh, you know, you also have the report saying that you could have a situation where these ultra-big solar farms could have the same story as ultra-big power plants. Mr. Jain, do you think that could also be a possibility? You know, a lot of them may actually fail? No. Uh... So one big difference between the ultra megawatt thermal projects versus ultra megawatt solar projects is we hardly have any variable cost. Actually, the entire cost is the okay. interest cost if you see after the project is commissioned. And probably people have taken a call that the interest costs are going down south. And we believe that with the NDA government in place, the interest rate regime is going to soften further. And that actually will help. Let me get Mr. Ivan Saha's uh, opinion on it. This is also based on a lot of factors. The fact that you will have 20% load, load factor, plant load factor, rather than 16.5, 16.7 that you've been seeing so far. It's also based on the fact that, you know, interest rates probably will soften further, which I think is likely to be, to be harder going forward. Uh, I, we might have hit a base. So, so is this whole theory that that report throws out that the panels which are getting imported probably are not of good quality. Would you agree, Mr. Saha, with that, that they, they may not even last 25 years that they're supposed to? In 2018, when this, um, when this um, uh, projects are going to be built, uh, right. from a global benchmark of bankable capex uh, cost, I think the mm -hmm. capex that we have assumed, or when, when we do the number crunching and do the calculation, uh, then the capex is almost 35 to 40 percent lower, which means uh, that uh, the developers are taking mm -hmm. chances with, uh, uh, with falling uh, capex uh, prices, and they are taking chances with wow. modules, which is almost uh, 60 to 70 percent of the cost of the project. Um, uh, they are taking chances also with, coming down with buying very yes, so, uh, and they are taking chances. We are, we are of, taking chances buying, buying very, very cheap, low and that is the concern. I, absolutely, look, you said that, Kanika. Do you have that concern that we are we would end up, you know, picking up panels and modules which are very cheap? I don't agree. Because how are we even now doing this cheaper than China? Neither is our capital cost cheaper than China. Nor, nor, nor are the panels that we are importing cheaper than ch should be cheaper than China. So no, so I think that there's two two things to to sort of understand here. One um, to understand that the biggest gains are not coming from the panel prices going down. Panel prices are going down, mm -hmm. but panel prices are a very small proportion now. So the cost of technology is really not what's changing the game. Okay, it is the cost of finance that's changing the game. The other thing is that we have, and this is a this is a general tendency. If you're saying that, then cost of finance is still more expensive in India. Yeah, so no, that's not entirely true. Uh, the cost of finance in India, so 
there is some, uh, there is confidence that's building in the debt markets. Mm. And so there is, of course, the, the perceived risk premium that was being charged in the past is now shrinking. Okay. Right? Okay. And, and equity um, returns are also shrinking because there's a lot of EPC players who are also now solar Very developers. So yeah, and they're, they're willing to take that hit. Mm. And I think that that shouldn't be seen as desperation to win uh, tenders necessarily, but almost as this is an exciting time to be in an exciting sector. And, and that's what the market is telling us. I don't think it's desperation um, right. but that being said I think to the point of quality of panels we've there's a tendency to think that cheap is bad. Mm -hmm. Cheap in this case is not necessarily bad. It is true that perhaps domestic manufacturing is not as competitive um, at the moment, and so we'd like to sort of, you know, just say that everything that we're importing is of poorer quality. Um, we have now very strong sort of quality control mechanisms that are in place. Um, that where so, every... so you're not buying that, uh, I'm not buying that, that argument sorry, no. at all. All right, good to know that because, you know, when, when there's a mission to actually take the country further down the road on renewables. There's a commitment uh, being made by the government uh, in Paris. We don't want those kind of things happening. We'll take a short break. We come back to ask that big question as well. If solar is uh, getting cheaper, will this cleaner form of energy replace coal-based thermal power anytime soon? Currently, solar, solar energy constitutes a minuscule 3% of our total energy needs. And it's still three and a half times more expensive to carry or wheel solar power to transmission lines than thermal. So stay with us for that answer.